Hello there, I'm GB Vegas, and this is how to create a 3D Endless Runner in Unity, and welcome to episode 15. In this tutorial, we're going to create a main menu for our game using a separate scene. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So up until now we've only been dealing with one single scene which is this one scene here and for most versions of Unity it is the default scene commonly referred to as sample scene. So the idea of what we're going to do is we're going to create a new scene for our main menu and then rename this scene when we're no longer in it. So to do that let's go to file and let's go to new scene. And you'll remember this kind of look from when we started our very first scene many, many tutorials ago now. Uh, but essentially, it is just a fresh, brand new scene. And in here, we're going to add in some UI elements, much like we have done with the previous scene, except these are going to involve buttons. And the buttons are going to be what allow us to click and go to different places within the game. So the idea of what we're going to do over the next couple of tutorials is ba basically build up a quick, simple main menu. And then we're going to bring our other scene when we crash into a log or a tree or something, it'll bring us to our main menu so then we can go through the loop again. So firstly, let's actually add in a button for this menu. So let's go to game object, go to UI and let's go to button. And if we zoom out, we can see much like the other scene, we have the canvas and we also have this button that we have just added. So let's go to the canvas and let's set the UI scale to scale with screen size and let's set it to a standard 1080 like we did with the other canvas as well. So 1920 by 1080 and we'll have it dead center so it scales perfectly well. So let's now take this opportunity to go to our scenes folder and let's rename this sample scene right here. You'll notice we do have a lighting settings file there as well. Uh, we'll rename that just for convenience as well. Uh, but for this, we're going to call this Desert Run. I'll put LVL, short for level, and 1. So that's basically Desert Run Level 1. And then I'm going to copy that and just rename this one as well. And instead of having sample scene, this will be called Desert Run Level 1 settings.lighting. So these two scenes now match. So on top of that, let's now save our main menu. So let's go to file. Let's go to save as. And let's select scenes. And then let's save this as main menu and save. So now no matter what happens, we have our two scenes set. So let's get to work on exploring this particular button. If we press play now, you'll be able to see that, yep, it is just a button. And the great thing about Unity is this button is automatically semi-functional. So it will kind of do things if you hover over it or click it. Eventually, we will make it fully functional. But for now, let's do a bit of design work and get this particular scene looking a bit more like a main menu. So let's go to our button and let's rename it and let's call it play game and I'm going to change the anchoring position to dead uh, in fact we'll change it to top center right there and we'll reset the position there and let's drag it downwards to probably somewhere around about there let's have a look on our game view yep that should do uh, now let's increase the size of our button so we can use the rec tool right there and we can increase let's have it about there Move it back to center, roughly about there. So next, let's customize this a little bit more because it's not exactly very good right now. So let's go a little further down into play game and click on text. And let's actually type in here, play game. And let's change the font to the one we imported a couple of tutorials ago. And let's change the font size to something much bigger so we can see it a little better. Let's have... Um, 32 maybe? Still too small, I think. Let's have 46. Perfect. And I am actually going to set the color as white. Again, you don't necessarily have to do this. You can do it any way you want, but you know, let's watch how I do this and then you can customize it whatever way you want. 
Uh, let's set the font style to bold. And now I'm going to go back to play game, which is the button itself. So remember, the button itself has two separate objects. It's the button object and then the text object below, which is displayed on the button. So now what we can do is let's select this normal color. Let's change the alpha to zero. So now it just looks like text on the screen. However, if we press play and hover over this button, you'll see that something does actually happen to it. So you can see that it is selectable. So let's change how it looks when it's selectable. I'm going to go to highlighted color and I'm going to change it to jet black, but I'm actually going to have the alpha at 150. So it's kind of see-through, it's translucent. So let's press play again and we should be able to see. There we go, we can kind of see through it. And if we click it, you can see that something else does happen. So it's this selected color. So let's now change our selected color. Again, it doesn't matter how you have this, you can have it any color you want at all, but I'm gonna have it a solid black with an alpha of 255. So now, if we do this, we can hover over it, we can see, perfect. Click it, and you can see, that's how the clicking function works. It's been clicked. Like I say again, it doesn't matter how you have this, play around with some of these settings, have a go at changing the colors, maybe a green color, blue color, whatever, it's entirely, entirely up to you. Now what we'll do is we will duplicate this particular button so we can have all of our buttons kind of similar in how they look. So the next thing we need to do is duplicate it. So hold control, press D to do that. And we'll change this to, let's change it to achievements. So if you uh, haven't actually seen what this game is going to turn out like, there is a game that I have on Itch.io uh, called Timmy and Mousy. This tutorial, I'm sure I've said it before in this series, is based on that game. So what you see in that game, if you want to play, it is free to play. It's a complete game. And if you want, you can download the source code. Uh, but this is what we're building here. So we do have achievements in that game. So we are going to build them in this tutorial series as well at some point. So now let's go to that achievements button, go to text, and let's change that to achievements. Next, hold control, press D. Let's bring that down again. And let's have this button as um, store, because there is a store in Timmy and Mouse. So obviously there's no uh, real money used in that. It's kind of in-game currency. Uh, so store, and then let's go to text and change the text to store. Uh, let's have another button. We'll have this as, let's have this as credits, shall we? So credits and we'll change the text once again. Now, hopefully by now you don't need me to kind of keep going on about what we do here. One thing I will do is I'm going to select those four buttons and just bring them upwards a little bit so as I can see them a bit better. Uh, last one, uh, I'll have this as quit game, quit game, and to the text, I'll just have it saying quit game, and let's bring that button down to there. So now you can see that's how our menu looks. So if you press play, and you should be able to see that we can select all the different buttons. Obviously the clicking function, yep, we can click the buttons, but they don't do anything because we haven't coded what to do with them. We will be getting around to that at some point. Uh, but for now, we do have our simple menu set up and ready. So what I would also like to do is have a little bar at the bottom as well, which is kind of like a hint bar. So once again, referring back to that Timmy Mousy game, there is a hint bar in that game. Uh, so let's build that in now. So to do that, let's go to game object, let's go to UI and let's go to raw image. I'm going to set the color as completely black and set the alpha as 150. Um, the anchoring I'm going to have is stretched all the way across the bottom of the screen. So we're going to have this option. And let's bring it down here and let's use our rect tool again to stretch it all the way across like so, so if we go to our game view, we can see there's our little hint bar. 
Might be a bit too thick, but there we go. That should do the trick for now. Um, what I will do as well, now I think about it, is I kind of want to align everything just a little better because I want to have the title of the game at the top as well. Uh, obviously, you can use uh, an image if you want to. You can use text. It is entirely, entirely up to you. Uh, but what I am going to do is I am going to kind of cheat a little bit. And this text we have for the play game, I'm going to hold control, press D to duplicate. But then I'm going to pull it out of that text, uh, out of the button object, sorry. Place it here. And I'm just going to have this as game logo. And I am going to call this uh, Timmy and Mousy, like I say, because that is what the game is called. I'm going to bring it up to the top. And I'm going to use the rec tool to kind of stretch it a little bit, bring it center. And let's see, I'm going to have this set as 72. Is that? Yeah, so we just need to expand it a little more to about there. And I'm going to set the color to, I think yellow might be a bit silly because we're not really going to be able to see it, are we? Or will we? Oh, yeah, perfect. That'll do. So at this point, we've been in this tutorial for, what, 10, 11 minutes at this point? And we've built a quick and simple main menu. I mean, it's nothing too fancy at all, but game development is all about building something and then building upon that idea. So we've built the idea of our main menu here. Still loads more to do to it, like a background, an animated background that's dynamic. You know, that's what I want to get to uh, in the next tutorial. Uh, but for now, we have everything kind of working really nicely here. And I quite like how it's looking so far. It's up to you how you want to customize it by all means. Uh, final thing we're going to do is we're going to place uh, a text placeholder just down the bottom in that um, hint box. And also I am going to rename that hint box as well. So hint box and I'm going to take game logo hold control press D to duplicate and what I will do as well is game logo let's make sure that the settings are correct so they need to be stretched along the top for that but again it's your game you customize it how you want to uh, so game logo let's have this changed to hint text and bring it down to the bottom. Let's reformat this as a white color. Let's set this to uh, 38 size. And let's have this anchored as stretch all the way across the bottom. So this one here. Basically, we, we use the anchoring just so as it doesn't uh, look a bit strange when everything's, uh, you know, the screens change size and whatever else. Uh, for, Example, if we move this out and change this to full screen now, everything still looks as it should do. That's the reason why we do use the anchoring the way we do. Uh, and let's also have this hint text start here. And I think I might have it start about there. Cool. And one final thing, I'm going to have this, um, in fact, we'll have it not bold, so we'll have it normal. And we'll have this say, this is the hint text place holder. Cool. So a quick, simple main menu that will become functional very, very soon. Uh, but I am going to save that scene now. So make sure you do save that scene before we move on to the next tutorial. So speaking of the next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to go back into our other scene and we're going to do a little bit of coding that allows us to hit an object and then you know, we've got that fade out and then it will bring us into this main menu scene. And then from there, we'll actually put in a cool background uh, behind all of this, you know, with Timmy and Mousy dancing in the desert, that, that kind of thing. And obviously, the further we get into development, we'll make that more dynamic. So as when we come out of the ice running level, it'll be the ice as the background rather than the desert. So there's loads and loads of things to do. Uh, but yeah, until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.